Hey everyone, it's about 1 a.m. on, oh, it's now March 1st. Yep, so you may have seen the videos I made, the couple of shorts, when I was at the Hoosick train tunnel in Massachusetts earlier. It, it feels like earlier today, but it was technically yesterday. They got eight inches of snow there when most of Massachusetts got like four, and we were here. We got about, not even three. It's very fluffy. I'm going to go ahead and snow blow it just because if I don't, it's not going to melt anytime soon. It's going to be pretty cold in the forecast. Well, the point of today's video is someone asked me to make a demonstration video of splitting some wood that's green. Someone wanted to see how it reacts and how hard it is to pull apart and why I don't really want to do it. See this wood pile right here? All the logs that are there are a little bit too big for me to burn. So at some point, they all have to be cut in half. Or I have to take a couple inches off each end. Then I can just throw that round piece in the stove. Well, it's got to be done. Or I can just cut them in half and I can use it for camping stoves. Because then they'll be really short. So this right here is also my little stockpile of stuff that I'm going to do gardening next year with potting soil peat moss and that big black hose what what i plan on doing that is right over there is my hand pump well i plan on using that because my garden is right here that i built i can use this as a go-between i can pump right through this hook it up to the pump well it'll go through this and i can make like channels in the dirt you know i can flood all the trenches with that i feel pretty easily if there was a power outage it's kind of like an off-grid solution. I can also put this black hose to my gray water system on the house. Or even the gutters. Whatever comes along. So right here, this tree, when I cut this down, when I built the garden, that's in a video, there was carpenter ants pouring out of this. This is the stump it came from. Brush the snow off. You can see how much they actually hollowed out. And you can also see I... Lit it on fire. Those carpenter ants, they were really angry. They were climbing up my legs, biting me like crazy when I cut this tree down. Now, this tree was actually alive, but I could tell it would have died in a few years. And considering how hollow it is, I'm sure glad I took it down because this would destroy the garden since it was leaning that way. I also took down another tree over there that was completely dead. It made a big crunch when it fell over. So... I'm hoping I don't have to get the chainsaw out again. I'm hoping I can find a log in here. I'm going to get my tape measure, see if I can find one under 20 inches so I can give you a demonstration. This looks like it might fit this one, if I can get that out of there with the sledgehammer. All right. Oh, I was right. See, I'm very good at eyeballing it. See that? It's, um... It's like a half an inch over 20 inches. I think I can split that. Wow, that is 20 and a half inches. And this is 20 and a half inches. It is so close. It may or may not fit. It may fit if I slightly turn it. But I think I, I, I cut that pretty flat. Nope. All right. So right now it's like 28 degrees. This thing was a little bit challenging to start, but not horrible like it was when I did that chainsawing video on my main channel a couple days ago. It's really hard to start it that day. It was very cold. Yeah, this is still very alive and sappy, so I should be able to show you the same result that I was experiencing. Now, this is not the greenest tree. I cut this down late August. But it didn't have a hot summer to go through as far as drying. If this had gone through the whole summer, it would be easy. That'll get thrown in my wood pile for next year, along with the stuff I do split. See all that sawdust? That can just be thrown to the side when I snow blow the driveway when I'm done. You know, I was watching a YouTube video in a... Um... A snowblower manufacturer from Texas, I think it was. Because they don't usually have snow, they use piles of sawdust to test out their snowblowing equipment. 
Okay, so I drove today five hours to get back up here on the highway, and the whole time I was behind cars, spraying mist at me. The whole front of my car is ice, and look what I just chipped off. Isn't that funny? All right, I got my earmuffs on and my safety glasses. I hope this is the stickiest, most stubborn log ever. Never thought I'd say that, but for this example, I hope it is. Because every other one that would fit in the splitter, I already split from that pile in. Most of them were stubborn. And this one looks pretty wet, just from cutting it open. It looks like it's going to be stubborn, so let's give it a shot. It's pretty heavy, too, because it is still very well alive. Now it fits. Can't believe I had to get the chainsaw out to shave off like less than half an inch. All right. So far, so good. Maybe it's because it's frozen solid this time. Oh, well, yeah. here begins part of the stubbornness. It split it, but it's still... That was not actually bad at all. You can see how the fibers were starting to hold it together. It didn't, like, split super easy. It also wasn't the worst one either. That was not a good example. Maybe it'll do it this time. If not, I'm going to go run out in the woods and I'm going to grab a log that is, like, the greenest you can possibly get. It might just be because it's frozen. You see, they're definitely not splitting as easy as the other stuff you've seen me do. See the fibers holding it together? But some of them are just the most stubborn things. This one's not being that stubborn, though. Again, no, it's not. Walking into the scary forest. Here's my nearest wood piles. Hmm. I just don't see these ones giving me an issue either. Oh, well, I think I've already proven my point that it's definitely more difficult, but if they all win as easy as that one you just saw, we wouldn't be in that same problem. But also, if it wasn't this cold, it would also be very sticky all over the equipment in my hands. Well, I don't regret getting the log splitter going because I have a... I'm going to cut about a week's worth of firewood out of already dry logs before I put everything away for tonight. So I was already doing it tonight. Just had to start the chainsaw up. Here's tonight's firewood. Most of it's pine. There's a couple aspen logs, which are not rotten. The ones that aren't rotten actually burn pretty well because they haven't absorbed the rain and melting snow like a sponge. So they just gotta dry off slightly when they come in the house. So we'll be doing that today. I bought these earmuffs here for $10 in Walmart's gun department, and I wear them all the time whenever I'm doing something loud. Even something like this that I personally don't think is that loud. The, snow, the new snowblower is not nearly as loud as my old one, and I always wear these, use them chainsawing, anytime I'm making noise. I recently bought of, you know, I bought these because they're reusable, you know? That's a good thing about these. Uh, a few months ago, I bought like a 1,000 pair pack of um, 3M little orange ones that you curl up and you put them in your ear earplugs. Because last year was a big, uh, no, not last year. Two years ago was a big wake-up call to me that I need to be good with my ears. So I was ripping up a ceramic tile floor, which is very loud, without ear protection. After that... I had a on and off, severely loud, annoying ringing sound. 
I got some tinnitus and it was almost nonstop for months. Haven't heard it one bit in almost two years now. I don't ever want that to come back ever. So now I'm very careful with this. I'm very lucky that it went away. Now that I'm chipping away at these, here's a good example. If this were not seasoned, this would have been a much bigger issue. See that right there? It's the knotty pine. Knotty wet pine. Those are the worst ones when they're combined. If this was also wet, because you see this right here went to here. See that? Everywhere a branch used to be, it doesn't just go here. It goes all the way in the tree. Because when the tree was little, that started growing. And the tree keeps getting fatter and fatter, but that's still inside there. See that? If this was wet combined with that, that's when it's the worst.